Hey, thanks for joining me. Hope you're doing well. Throughout the 14th and 15th centuries, the North Polar Arctic was imagined not as an uninhabitable sheet of ice as modern day scientists and cartographers hold, but as a series of circular islands. The number of islands vary among these maps, although striking similarities can be seen, even on maps that were made thousands of miles away from one another. Did the map makers of the time simply copy and make additions to the popular maps which were false? Or perhaps, as I'm proposing, that this series of Arctic lands is not made up, but exists on our Earth. This region was subsequently deleted from future maps, and ever since, the common narrative is that the North Pole is a lifeless, uninhabitable stretch of ice. This is a short presentation on these maps, what they tell us, and how they relate. This map from 1531, made by Oronce Fine, shows four large islands at the North Pole, with various landforms scattered around. Just to demonstrate where we are, many have never looked at older maps. This is Europe, Africa, Canada, and Russia. This is Greenland, quite close to the North Pole's southern continent. At the center we see a massive rock formation or mountain. We can draw similarities to the center of the four continent system of Asian cosmology, where a sacred mountain known as Mount Maru or Mount Shumasin lay. This map from 1534, made by the same map maker, gives us a similar but slightly different configuration. The North Polar lands are seen as five or six large islands, and the center being what appears to be a central island, again with a large rock formation. This is Greenland, Scandinavia, Iceland, and Canada. This map is from 1594 and made by Cornelius de Jose. At first glance, we notice how magnified the North Polar region is compared to the previous maps. Instead of Oronce Fine's version with large bodies of water separating the island, we have the four continent system divided by thin canals, which meet at the center, where there is again seemingly a massive rock. For reference, we have Greenland, Scandinavia, Iceland, and Canada. This map, also from 1594, by Petrus Plancius, shows these same four continents, but separated via hemisphere. The inland sea where the four rivers meet is very pronounced, and again, we can marvel at how large of a system this is, and also how close it is to what we would call these outer lands. This map from 1595 by Gerhard Mercator gives us a close-up of this system. In small letters reads, Rupes Nigra et Altissima, the black and very high rock, at the center. There is a mountain range surrounding each island continent, which in one of Mercator's letters he describes as being 14 miles wide. This is a version from 1608. It's interesting that in previous versions of this map, the southern continent isn't sort of blurred out, but is extended. The smaller islands below are completely different. It's hard to tell, but Greenland is practically touching this island with a land bridge. Or it could be a thin canal, no more than 5 to 10 miles wide. This undated map of the Arctic Circle, or Circulus Arcticus, is very similar to Mercator's maps around the same time except the center land contains no magnetic rock or rivers dividing it. It's simply one continent. The word Hyperbore, which labels this continent, refers to the mythological far northern Greek paradise of Hyperborea, the land beyond the north wind. Greenland is referred to in this map as Iloxoa. To the right is Scythia, which is interesting because in the 4th century BC, Aristotle wrote of Hyperborea as being past the Riphian Mountains on the borders of Scythia, although no topography is shown on this map. This is an undated Japanese map with no name attached. It looks like it's probably from the mid-1500s. The Arctic region on both hemispheres show it looks like the edges of the four land masses. This map, too, is undated with no recorded name. It's a Chinese map we clearly see the northern half of the same structure shown in Mercator maps, the indrawing seas, dividing rivers, large rock at the center. Here's another undated Chinese map. This one is the sloppiest, least concise, and most different of all of these maps. 
there are five or six main islands with various scattered smaller ones. And just for reference, this is Canada, Russia, and this landmass appears to be Greenland. This map from 1567 by Abraham Ortelius includes at the North Pole two of the four island continent system. And this is like the original Mercator maps, showing Greenland with either a connecting land bridge or a thin canal between the borders. All compasses on Earth point to the Holy Grail, attracted by the magnetic Mount Maru at the center of our flat plane, the crater into which when we enter, we are brought into a mystical, hidden land, one which is not affected by the parasitism which is so common on these outer lands. These maps prove that the knowledge of Eden, of Shambhala, Agartha, was once widespread, but for some reason was deleted from public knowledge and occulted. But now is the unveiling. The gates of Eden are open, and pretty soon the North Seal project will be taking the initial trip in order to inspire future waves. We could call this an exodus, a return to the cradle, back to the Garden of Eden. Thank you for watching. I love you all.